Hello, welcome to Vendit TV, a TV that showcases different vendors. My name is Abibat. Today we are talking about fashion. According to the editorial policy of fashion theory, the general of dress, body, and culture, fashion is defined as the cultural constructions of the embodied identity. And of course, today we are meeting with Mr. J, the CEO himself. If you can see what I'm putting on, this is one of his brand. Yes, and today is going to tell us more about his business. Here with me, we have Jubril, the CEO of Mr. J. Kuto. Good day, sir. Yes, good day. Thank you very much. Who is Jubril? Um, firstly, um, my name is Jubril Ali Yuenfo, fondly called Mr. J, of Mr. J. Kuto. Um, I'm a tailor, basically. I'm a designer and I'm a fashion stylist. Um, a graduate of physiology from Ladoki Akitola University of Technology. Wow. Um, an MLS, MSc holder in um, community medicine, reproductive and family health track to be precise. Wow. Um, what more would you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Mr. J, what makes you unique from others? Um, well, one thing is... Um, I, I try as much as possible to, um, I really don't try to even compete with others. I try to do my thing. And um, I have a mentor who says, um, your work hard so your product speaks for you in your absence. So me putting all of the focus and attention on creating beautiful pieces is actually one thing that has really, really, really brought us to where we are today. I don't compromise on giving out quality. I don't compromise on um, the finishes. There are some times we would have to ditch a particular piece because I am not satisfied with the look and it is not correctable. Okay. So staying on dishing out the best is actually one of the things that had really brought us this far. So who is a mentor? Okay, I call him um, Mr. Charles, Mr. Charles of Africana Couture. He's a designer in Abuja. Okay. Um, what kind of market do you target? Well, usually we, we target the C, um, C class of the economic strata. Okay. And then the middle age from, say, age of um, 25 to like 40, 45. But once in a while, we get elderly people or older people come here to say we want to make this. But usually, this age bracket are the ones who really value, who really understand what it is to make great pieces and can actually afford to dip their hands in the pocket and, and, and get stuff like that. What do you think will help you to attain more success in this business? Um, well, um, the competition is quite... Um, tight and um, you know so high but um, I reason every day on how to work more on the structure if we have a better structure and um, everything doesn't have to wait for Mr. J Mr. J most likely doesn't even need to see all of the pieces before they are being sent out then it means that we can accommodate as much as possible with correct quality control. So in essence, because for example now, you're, you're, we are making a piece and um, before they can send it out, they are waiting for Mr. J to see them to say, are they okay before they can be sent out. They are waiting for Mr. J to come and cut this part because he's the only one that can do it. We've actually gone past a lot of stages. This is the eight year in the business. Wow. So we've gone past some stages I mean, I work more every day on, on attaining, um, working more on having myself liberated, take myself off the business to an extent. I was still telling my, my people of recent that, okay, 
I want to do this thing. I want to take a whole week off work. Let's see what you guys can come up with. Because oh. to, to an extent, I've been able to draw the structure. They know the things I handle are, are really not physical to an extent. They are just mental. Me seeing something and being able to say, okay, this can pass. No, no, no. You have to refix this. Supervise entirely and say, okay, this is next. Let's place this over that. Let's place that. Why? I mean, if I'm if I'm at home sitting or probably I travel out of the town or out of the country, these are still things they can just call me on phone and I can tell them to go ahead or not. Um, what are the difficulties you face in this business? Hmm. Well, uh, majorly, number one, number one, our tailors. In fact, if you hear top designers, if you ask them this question, it's most likely going to be the same. You get a particular person, we call them stylists. It doesn't mean fashion stylists anyways, but then, you know, the tailors you pay, you get them to work for you. This person knows, the only thing probably the person knows is how to pedal a machine, and then the little, little old, or their old fashioned ways they learned from their roadside or gas okay. is what they bring here. We groom them to be able to give out top notch pieces, and after a while, they stand and they say they want to leave. That's so sad. Do you understand? Yes. You ha most likely have no control over it. Of course. You can't tie them down. When you start tying them down, they, they can't spend one month before you yourself will just let them go because they'll start acting, acting up. They'll yes. mess your fabric up. They'll mess your pieces up. How has social media affected your business? Um, well, um, positively. I mean, I mean, a whole lot aside referral physical referral when somebody says um ah i like this you're wearing who makes it who makes your who makes your pieces or who makes your trads and they're like oh ah, mr j blah blah okay can i have his contact aside that physical referral what social media does in our lives i mean we uh, our generation we are quite lucky i can't yes. imagine i can't imagine uh, um doing this some Seven, ten years ago when social media hasn't really gotten this um, popular and useful. I don't know. I, I can't count the number of people we get from Instagram. You are chatting via WhatsApp. You are exchanging media. You know, you, you understand yeah, I understand, me? Yes. I go onto Twitter at times, post pictures, promote. Yeah, and at yeah. least I had like four or five people in my DM saying, okay, I like this. Oh, like so you are in Ibadan. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. How much is it? This and that. So um social media has really helped in a whole lot of way to be honest positive way i can't even tell i can't remember if there had been any negative effect or any negative way social media has um, affected us beautiful um have you ever thought about giving up like this thing uh, i'm not doing it i'm tired i'm gonna go back to my furniture business any business i've ever thought about or I maybe was... going back to your schooling whatever whatever you know i was on a radio show one time and then this same question was asked and I remember the answer I gave, and it had not changed. It's been over a year, and it has not changed. Change. I had never for a second regretted learning this or doing this. I had Aww, never for a second so felt, I'm done. Wow. No, not even, no, not even I'm done. Why did I even do this? No, no, no. Let me dream of, you know, in, inside your dream, you are thinking, oh, can, I actually, can I actually be done? Okay. You see, it's, it's far. Yes. Rather than saying, I'm done. You are dreaming of thinking that you are oh, done. Yeah, it has never happened. As in that, it, it, if, if, even if you dream that you are done, you are going to wake back mm -hmm, up to reality. Yes. But it's not your dream. Yes, you are not even seen, thinking, not no, seen. no, no, it had never happened. It had never happened. In fact, I'm always seeing myself like, this is just what God wants me to do. So because good. some things happen. I can say you are doing good. Thank just, you, ma'am. Look at no, mm -mm, you're doing good. Thank look you, at him. In fact, I'm you. getting my raise my husband now, <laughs> so you can style him. Yes. Slay, slay, he'll slay. Ah. So, so to be honest, I had never, I had never felt like giving up or regretted getting onto this line. Never ever. Okay. Lastly, let me ask this: How do you combine your colors? Okay, maybe someone entered into your office and then he said, Mr. G, I'm having a wedding, but I don't know how to mix color. Okay, I, I think I want something different from my neck, something different from my, maybe your suits, the pants, the shirt. Like, how do you, have you ever thought about, okay, your skin, maybe their skin matters when you're trying to pick a particular color for your customers? Okay. Um, some people will come to you and say, Baba, you're the designer, do anything. I tell them, no, no. I cannot do anything. 
I still need to get some information from you. What kind of person are you? Your personality goes a long way. Yeah. What if I say I want to make something for you and your personality doesn't go, go, with, it. go with it? Yeah. Are you a conservative person? Or are you liberal? Are you in between? Somebody says, I want a white agbada. And then I'm saying, say no more. And then I went to put black embroidery on it because I want to, I want to impress you. And then you are, if you, are, you are the conservative type. I, do, I don't want to show up at a particular place. I'm, an, I'm the first mm -hmm. person everybody is no, looking at. Yeah. And then I had used black to make your embroidery. It is going to mm -hmm. happen. Of course. Do you understand? You. Very, very. And then I asked you, what is your personality? Okay, for example, this is what I mean. If I have a white agbada, would you want me to use a matching color of embroidery, like white on white? Or would you want me to do ash, something subtle, or gray, or black? If I can use black, then it means I can use something like rose gold, okay. or burgundy, yeah. or those ones that would really contrast. Color. And then you are telling me, ah, no, 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 I don't like all those ones. I want to like, now you see why right. I need it. I don't know your personality. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. So when anybody comes in here, I'm asking them what their personality is. I want to know the kind of person you are. I want to know what you like to see on yourself. Some people will be dark and they'll still tell you what they want to wear is black. <laughs> yes, yeah, when they wear it, when they wear it and they still look good. But compared to somebody that is fair, somebody that is fair will tell you, I don't like to wear black because it looks too catchy on me. And then this person has come to you to say, do your thing. Mm -hmm. And you think because this person is fair, you can make black for them because it's too pop. Yes. And apparently this person doesn't like it. True. So I still consult with you to know your kind of taste. Because I don't know you. I, don't, I know nothing about your personality. Yeah. It's a different thing if I can look at you and tell you, okay, so, 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 so will look good on you. Yes, it will. Yeah, but would you problem. like it? Yeah, true. Would you be able to rock it after that particular day because you don't have a choice? There are some things you wear because you don't have a choice at that particular time. This is what they have made. And I'm wearing it to this particular occasion. But after that, would you be able to wear it? Hey, long sleeve, cufflinks, long mm -hmm. sleeve, cufflinks. Somebody comes and I'm like, okay. The usual prestigious style we make now is a long sleeve that has cufflinks. When you come out anywhere, people will see you and they see that you're wearing clothes. Okay. Thank you very, very much, yes, Mr. Welcome. J. Yes. It has been a fabulous chat with Mr. J. He has said a lot about fashion, about style making and how. And you know, the most important thing is that you should make sure you follow us on all our social media platforms, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, at Vendit TV. And of course, this is really, really important. Do you not forget to do what? Subscribe on our channel at Vendit TV for more and more lovely, fascinating episodes. Thank you.